Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Words on Whiskey, episode number 28, uh, 9th of December, and a very cold and blustery evening it is in Dublin tonight, but inside it's lovely and warm. So, look, as I said, we've got a very different show to what we'd normally have, and I think it's a nice, uh, refreshing break from drinking and talking whiskey all the time. So, this is something that uh, very dear to my heart, anyway, in terms of... Uh, linking with some artistic talent that Ireland has and uh, our next guest certainly is an up-and-coming uh, fantastic artist really really talented and delighted with her work uh, and I love what she does so but let's start off with the news so uh, qu a fairly busy a fairly busy week um, nothing nothing crazy but let's kick off and uh, Big changes in the Irish Whiskey Association as uh, David Stapleton's two-year tenure has come to to an end, and uh, stepping in his place is John Quinn, who is not coming on our board on the Irish Whiskey Magazine, but he is joining as chairman of the Irish Whiskey Association. Of course, uh, John is a global brand ambassador for Tullamore Jew, and as well as that, uh, James Doherty from Sleeve League is coming in as vice chairman. So. They start their tenure today and I wish them all the very best of luck and look forward to seeing what changes and how they keep doing a good job for the Irish whiskey sector and through the IWA. Uh, other news as well, there's a, a lovely book out and you know, it's uh, coming up to Christmas and it's uh, something that I'd love to see people take uh, interest in is to actually support Irish products and uh, this book here by Monica Coughlin uh, is uh, out and available and it is a book that contains 50 cocktail recipes based on Irish spirits and those Irish spirits range from gin, pochine, vodka and of course whiskey and uh, we just love to see it support it's, it's an absolutely beautiful book it's so well illustrated and of course Monica has been a a well-renowned uh, photographer for the last 10 years in Ireland and she does food and drink photography particularly and her company pepperazzi.ie is her website do you go and have a look and as I said it's a 168 page book it sells for 25 euro and it would be really an ideal gift for somebody for Christmas so bear that in mind and then uh, powers have a gone through super value and there are two super value single cask releases of 11 year old single pot still finished in ex bourbon casks and they are retailing for 159 euro each and they are available now and of course our friend nick from tomangate irish whiskey uh, today announced two new releases almost to the day this is an inaugural release of 100 bottles. <coughs> so he has two releases. Um, one is a cognac cast finish, and one is a single pot still finished in an imperial stout finish. And uh, they're both cast strength. There's about one is 59.9%, 59.59%, and the pot still is 58.23%, and limited bottles uh, around the 200 mark of each maybe slightly more and they're retailing for 99 euro their their cast strength they're 99 euro they are non-colored non-chill filtered and from tomorrow they should be available from celtic whiskey store and also from fine wines and i believe his website as well so if you can check our website you can see more details about those releases but uh, i know nick's put an awful lot of work into those and the detail on, on the bottling and on the labeling is fantastic. So best of luck with that, Nick. And there you can go, you can see the number of, so 300 of uh, the single malt cognac and 240 of the single pot still. So they should be a nice gift. And then of course we have our own news as well. Uh, Irish Whiskey Magazine issue number 10 is out after a long delay and I'm sure uh, it's been a, a long wait, and I hope it's worth it. Uh, it's been a very difficult year, as you know, and you know we're so dependent upon your support. And thank you, everybody, for your patience and understanding. 
Um, it means a lot, but I think this one is a, a very special issue. And of course, if you're looking for an ideal Christmas gift, please visit our website. Um, the show, the magazine, completely depends upon your support, and uh, it would be great to have it. So thank you very much. That will be going in the post tomorrow. And of course, you may have noticed we've gone for something slightly different on the cover, and we will be talking to the young lady behind that cover now in a minute. So I suppose let's uh, let's welcome our guests. Let's welcome our guests. So hello, Danny. Hi. Hello, Danielle Simpson. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. I know you had a long day and you're not long in the door. <laughs> No, it's been a very, very long day packing orders and um, getting a few commissions done. So it's good to be home finally. Yeah, you've had a, a long, difficult week. Uh, but I would say you're going to take a break now over Christmas, I hope, and get a bit of rest. 100%. I'm looking forward to that break. It's been it's such a difficult year because obviously you've got so many restrictions, so you're just trying to take as many opportunities as they come. But sometimes all the opportunities seem to happen in the same month yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, so you're you're up in belfast uh and you've been there all year i mean you you haven't been able to travel like you normally would obviously i've actually do you know what to be fair i've, I've actually done a fair bit of traveling this year despite that obviously quite um in a safe way i was yeah. in australia at the start of the year um and then i stopped in at singapore this was before all this madness right. um then went back to Australia, Amsterdam, and then all this kicked in and obviously that slowed me down. But yeah. we did get a little bit of a break to Italy over the summer um, when it was safe to do so. So yeah, that was nice. But you're in lockdown now at the moment, are you? Yeah, we're still in lockdown. I think it finishes tomorrow night. I don't think anyone really knows what's going on anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're on a, it, it, it's unusual. You're on a different lockdown to us down here, which is, you know, strange as well. So We've been out of lockdown now for about a week, level yeah. five. But, uh, you know, things are tricky. How has that affected your work? It's been it's been quite difficult, especially at the start. Like, obviously, the very first lockdown that happened, I think the unknown, no one knew what to really do. So everything shut down. Yeah. Um, and I found I had to adapt in a way because obviously I lost all, all my mural work with the hospitality closure, a lot of the retail closure. So I went for commissions and I just started trying to market myself in that way um, and online sales on my website. Yeah. And lucky for me, a lot of people were wanting to send something to someone else just to say I'm thinking of you because obviously they can't physically be there but we can still rely on post yeah. so I was able to sort of um, tap into that a little bit and then obviously as re uh, the hospitality has been reopening because that's been an uh, <laughs> that's been a um, ongoing battle this year it's been opening and then it's been closing there's been little bits of murals here and there yeah no but uh, i i see that uh, you are doing a lot more illustrations now but the the majority of your work before was it murals that you used to do or mostly or or is it more illustrations i tend to do a lot more murals i would say yeah. like last year i definitely did like 80 percent was probably murals and then the 20 percent was um commissions this year sort of taught me to sort of not focus on just one thing and have that 80% sort of balance it out between having a um, passive income on my website, uh, which is through my illustrations, which I really enjoy doing. Um, yeah. And then I get to take a break from that when the murals come through as well. So it kind of is nice to be able to navigate between the two. Yeah. How, do, how did you, well, let's talk about uh, where you're from originally, because that's not a Belfast accent. Um, yeah, so I am from Australia um, and I came over here. Sorry if you can hear that noise in the background. Can you hear that? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. That's gone now. <laughs> I think it's still going. Sorry. Um, so I came over here about two and a half years ago and um, I... I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I... 
<laughs> it was distracting me. It's all finished now. I came over here two and a half years ago to travel. So I was meant to go to uh, live in Holland, which I did for some time. Yeah. And I kept coming back to Belfast because my granny is from here. Um, my mum was actually born in Belfast. And I did a few murals through Willie Jack at the Harper and I'd fly back to Holland and then I'd go through that whole process over and over again quite a few times. And yeah. I just decided that I should move to Belfast and make that my base because I had friends, family and work here. Yeah. Um, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. How do you find it as an artistic centre, Belfast? It's quite a colourful city, so there, there's definitely a lot of work there for me. Um, I um, found especially a lot of the, the hospitality, they appreciate hand-painted um, designs. Yeah. I find that probably in Australia I wouldn't get as much work for that because they would tend to probably go like digitally printed, which is such a shame. Yeah. Um, and I think also in terms of street art, there is, a, like Belfast tends to tell their stories a lot through art and there's been like a new wave of new art that's come through that is inspiring and uplifting and it's been really nice to be involved in that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I lived in Belfast, as you might know, and seen some fantastic murals just around the city and, and shop fronts. They tend to put murals as well uh, and paintings on, on some of the shop fronts as well, and they look fantastic. But, I mean, your yeah. style is very, very distinctive. Uh, I mean, it stands out. It's very clear that it's your work mm -hmm. when you see it. I mean, how would you describe your, your style of art? I'd say it's like an infusion of um, floral elements mixed with typography, and I enjoy doing a lot of, um, like, built landscape things so like taking buildings and architecture and, and finding a way to tell a story through my art so I, I love doing travel related things as I've mentioned I enjoy doing traveling so um, whenever I go to a city I like to take all the little elements that make that city um, someone's home or someone's um, travel destination and being able to create a picture that tells that exact story yeah. um, and that's kind of it's, it's very hard to sort of describe it exactly because it, it, it is a mixture some people say oh, it looks a little bit mandala it looks traditional tattoo it's just a yeah a it's very cool. refreshing <laughs> no it's very refreshing artwork like and, and, and it is very uh, colorful and uplifting I think as well and you know when I came across your work I came across it through uh, Instagram first and then of course, you've worked with some of the the drinks brands as well. So you've worked with Powers and Jameson and, of course, a lot of the, the bars as well and even some of the bars down here. And your work stands out, you know, hugely amongst others. But, you know, the the murals at Belfast would have been traditionally associated with or kind of been replaced by a new wave of art. And, and, and yours is uh, very refreshing and up there from the uh, from the old style that we had. <laughs> you know, so I mean, how, how do have you found the reaction uh, in Belfast to to your work? Oh, it's been nothing but positive. Like I've painted in quite a few different cities, and um, for example, I was recently in London, and it's so fast paced there that as you're painting on the street, you kind of sometimes feel like you're actually in the way. Whereas when you're painting in Belfast. You can't get anything done because you're just constantly stopped for a chat and people say, oh, can I have a photo? Can I, what are you doing this for? And people love it. Um, it's very highly photographed as well and shared across social media, especially um, there's a mural that I did in Belfast City Centre um, and it says, um, Belfast, you are here. What's the crack? No rain, no flowers. And that was really well received because as people are walking on the way to work, they're not just walking down a street that was traditionally, well, not traditionally, but it has um, a sort of seen better days, let's say. Yeah, um, yeah. These bright, colourful artwork all over the hoardings and it's it's really uplifting. So I I would have to say that I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for, there it is, I couldn't have asked for a better response 
to the yeah. work that I've done. Yeah, I mean, I love the the mix of typography that you have with the with the background as well and with the imagery. Um, what's your you know your design process and your thought process when when you go and do something like this? Do you start off on a piece of paper and upscale it, or do you have to think in a very different way when it's going to be a mural as to when it's uh, an illustration? I would say no two jobs are the same, so there's a different process for every single one. But really? generally, I would find that um, you know speaking to the client and finding out what is the objective to it. So for example, this one here, we really wanted something that was engaging with people as they were walking down the street. That was highly, um, I don't like using the word Instagrammable, but like highly <laughs> photographed. Um, yeah. Something that makes people wanna go, oh wow, I need to take a photo of that or I wanna stand in front of it. So then you're sort of looking at, okay, well, what wording can I use um, that, is relatable to the people who are seeing it. Um, yeah. What, for example, in here I used a couple of different Belfast elements like Belfast City Hall, the Garfield Bar, which is directly behind it. Um, further along there's the Aslan, um, so I, I illustrated that as well. Yeah. So I would start on paper, because that's just really brainstorming a whole lot of ideas and just trying to write down as much as I can, and then I would switch to um, my iPad, which has been one of the best investments I got because it allows me to uh, digitally create things. And for me, time is money as much as I love drawing on paper, which you may have seen from the last Instagram yeah. post I did. Um, I thoroughly enjoy that, but that was originally designed on, um, on a digital format because there is a lot of go back and forth, let's change this color, let's move this, let's make this work against this wall better. Yeah. Um, so you'll find that it eventually refines right down and then the biggest task of it all is to take it from that format onto the wall, which yeah. can be done in so many different ways depending on what the surface is. I mean, can you tell when you do it on a small format how it's going to look on, on a bigger format? Do you, or do you have to... You know, you're designing on a small scale with the big picture in mind, if you like. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like, I like to make sure that the art fits the um, canvas, not yeah. canvas fit the art. Like, because there's so many things that you can use that sort of tie things together. So you're really having to think from that perspective. Is it up high? Like, what are you going to see when you're standing below? Um, you know. Are you going to be standing um, far away? So, like, obviously the detail is going to be completely pointless. There's so many different aspects that you have to think about, um, which is something that I, I definitely learn something new from every single mural that I do because I I would say that I'm still quite fresh to this game. Um, especially well, you, are young, you, you are very young. <laughs> yeah. You are very young. But, I mean, you made a great name. For, I mean, for example, this piece here that we see uh, – that is a temporary piece, is it? They're actually, so most of that is actually done on wooden boards and the right. wooden boards um, I actually painted in a studio. Right. And then we had them installed, which was very nerve wracking because I had to make sure that my measurements were correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they were adhered to the hoarding that was already there. So the whole idea is that if they need to move the hoarding, they can take those boards off and reuse them. But there is sections that I've had to do directly to the hoarding. So that would just disappear when that was taken down. But that's the beauty of street art. Street art isn't meant to be there forever. Um, and that's what makes it so. Um, Please tell me it doesn't, it doesn't go into a skip for this, does it? I hope not, <laughs> but you know, like there is murals that I've done that um, sadly no longer exist. They only exist in my memories and photos now. Yeah. But and and that's that's street art for you. Um, uh, I, how is how is street art different than how would you define it as being different to to conventional art, if there is such a word? Well, I tend to do two different things. Like obviously street art is a little bit harder to pay the bills with because you have to, there has to be um, either like a council or whatnot um, that are paying for that. Yeah. Um, 
installation. Then when it comes to things within hospitality or a retail environment, that would be considered more of a, a commercial mural, let's say. Yeah. The beauty of street art is you tend to have a lot more creative freedom so that you can have a think about what message you want to tell and what you want to do, whereas commercial art, you are sort of stuck in the boundaries of um, whatever the brief is or whatever brand you're working with. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, a balance between what do you enjoy yeah. um, doing. So I try to sort of do both of them in a way because I love having those positive um, messages yeah. that people just see every day on the street as they're walking around. Yeah. I mean, this piece here, for example, it looks quite, I don't want to guess how long it is but I mean how long would it have taken to do I actually can't tell you because it was it was I call it the never-ending mural of Belfast because I'm just uh, waiting for them to call me and say hey we've got an extra 20 meters for you to do because okay. it was done in it was done in um installments so I think from memory it's about 250 wow. meters of painting like it was massive it wow. wraps right around both corners. Um, so I just can't remember because it was done in so many different stages and, you know, some days, like, you know, could, do you count the design time or is yeah. it just the painting time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I, have a question. Time. I have a question here from uh, Louise who's in Belfast uh, and she said, do you find the mood and atmosphere of a city directly influences your mural work? Uh, 100% like that's that's what I was sort of saying before is I love to tap into the story of the city and the personality let's say of the city mm -hmm. and that's what I would sort of illustrate um, it definitely does I think at the same time I do like to in, inject a little bit of positivity even if that city doesn't necessarily have that um yeah. as well so it does influence it to a certain degree yeah yeah let's take a look at another piece then um i'll go through a few so this one i think is the jaggy nettle is it, or it, is. Is it yeah so that's a bar in Belfast. if anybody's not familiar with it and that was a commissioned piece was it yeah that was commissioned through powers whiskey um and it was originally planned uh prior to this pandemic and it was all designed and then obviously that hit um and we painted it during uh, i can't even think what month it was now but it was during the lockdown we painted it um so we're waiting for it to have its proper moment when that when that pub can finally reopen they haven't been able to open since it's all been done yeah so have a formal let me see i think it, that's it there isn't it that's it there so it's friends dogs and uh, dogs and whiskey at the jiggy nettle so we really wanted something that tied um the 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 pub in with um the brand and create something that also was within my style as well yeah and i think I mean, we need like, that <laughs> tell me i mean you're you're doing street art and you're painting on walls in belfast uh, uh, in the north and what about the weather i know i mean <laughs> if, uh, what happens if it starts raining halfway through uh, uh, there are all those practical elements i mean i'm sure in australia it never rained when you were uh, doing them but um i was gonna say you speak into an australian here but i will say um i actually as long as it's not wet and windy, like um, that's kind of where I run into problems, especially if I'm using spray paint and it's windy, it can be really difficult. Um, that job in particular at the Jiggy Nettle, um, there was a day that there was really high um, winds and I was on scaffolding and I just had to call it a day because it just right. wasn't safe and the wall was getting wet. And unfortunately, there's only so much you can do when I first came over here and it would be like slightly drizzling or it looked really overcast, I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to paint today. And I, I quickly worked out that there's not going to be that many sunny days. So as long as it's it's a dry day, then it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. But Does it, I would, sorry. 
no, sorry. The the weather does it affect your your color tone and your palette and uh, as well? Uh, not so much that. It's more so the fact that like I've I've done a mural before where I've been using stencils and it just started raining and it's just completely destroyed my like lettering stencils that I had cut out that I'd spent like I mean hours and hours cutting out and then perhaps like you get drips and that so you you do have to check the forecast but in saying that um i would rather paint in the cold than in the heat in australia because i've done that as well and it's it's incredibly difficult i know people say it's beautiful in the sun but when you're in that heat it, you can't escape it um yeah. you can get very dizzy and it's not you get shaky it's not desirable <laughs> yeah so tell me uh, what's the process then for doing something like this so you take your your smaller illustration and then what do you do to actually make it large how do you transfer that onto is it copying by hand or is it making stencils and putting them up or or how do you actually take it from the concept page to something that will that scale it depends on the surface of the wall and like if it's indoors or if it's outdoors there's right. a few different variables so there's a couple of different options you can go one is like gridding which i've done a few times um so that would be scaling things to certain um squares and then basically focusing on that and the whole idea is just to get the rough outline up um i just need to make sure everything is in the right spot before I start putting in the finer detail and laying down the color. The next option um, is to use a projector just for um, your main outlines, just to make sure everything again is to scale. I try not to use that too often, but sometimes if, if I'm pushed for time, it can be a lot easier to work with. But of course you can't use that outside um, and you have to have a wall that's far enough away. Then there's stencils, which I do enjoy using for lettering. It just gives it a really nice crisp edge. Um, as you can sort of see from here, this is one that's being created for something, but you, you do have to manually cut them out. So it definitely doesn't save time. It's actually a longer process, but you get a nicer finish. Yeah. And then there's just freehanding, um, which sometimes, you know, that's what you end up doing. So yeah. it, it kind of all depends on what yeah. you've got in front of you. A question in there from Kevin O'Connell. Thanks, Kevin, for the question. It's uh, from where or how did you establish your style of art? Has it always been like this from the beginning or has it developed over time? It's definitely a journey. Like it hasn't always been like this. And I noticed even um, between like now and uh, six months ago, my style is constantly evolving and changing. Yeah. Um, there was a post I recently did and you can see the four, four years apart. So it was from when I very first started doing art to now, and I was doing a lot more mandala based things. So a lot of patterns. And then now you look at my style and it is, it's quite different. So you're always kind of, I think as an artist, even if you look at say, um, uh, I went to the Picasso museum in um, Barcelona and you look at his artwork and as it goes through his life he's constantly changing and adapting and it's it it sort of tells its own story and yeah. so that's kind of how I look when I do my artwork it's like we're always going to adapt and change and you're going to use different mediums which are going to produce different results as well yeah. so it's just one of those things it's just practicing and seeing where it takes you yeah, well, there's another question here. A lot of questions. So, uh, who are your artistic <laughs> influences, street artists like Miss Van or others? I have quite a few. Like, I think social media is great at the moment because you can follow and, and get um, influence both artistically and also motivated in the yeah. business sense as well so there's a few different ones i have on both sides um there's a few different street artists there's a couple back from australia that um i enjoy their work but i think here in um ireland there is a lot there's so many artists that have such an inspiring and and different approach to art that i have um yeah. and it's sort of been nice because we've been able to create a community everyone's really friendly so you can branch off and and get ideas 
Um, in terms of actually like naming particular names, I would probably say um, there would be a. I'm trying to like think off the top of my head. My brain's not fresh at the moment. Uh, um, but I there saw was some on your I saw some on your Instagram that you. Uh, I think it was character faces that you particularly liked. Um, I think they might be Belfast space. Maybe they had pictures in Rome as well, outside the Colosseum. I saw those. Um, ah, that that may have been my partner's artwork. Can I say? Oh, okay. yes. of, course. of course, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. If he was in Rome, that would have been with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. But, uh... Yeah, yeah. There's see, there's people who just do. Um, there's like a guy back in Australia. His name is Struthless, and he just does like these really um simple illustrations and that. But they've got so much meaning behind them. And um, and then there's ones here in Belfast. Um, there's a couple of different artists like We Knowles. Um, I've got a few friends who do illustrations as well, and each one sort of brings something new to the table. Yeah, I have to say Belfast has a real uh, has really adopted adopted street art very well. I, I mean, uh, more so than any other city, I think in uh, in Ireland. Like Waterford would be another example where there's uh, yeah. a, great, a great street art culture, uh, and it's promoted very strongly. Uh, Belfast obviously is another one, but uh, you know. What do you think of influences that come maybe from from the more famous? Obviously, Banksy is obviously hugely notorious, uh, hugely famous. And but are there up and coming other young people that are ones to look out for? There is one um, down. Uh, where is he based? He's in Ireland, and he does like these three D. Have you seen? He does these three D murals on their portraits and absolutely incredible i just can't even comprehend how he manages to get that large scale um i'll have to send you through the link of his thing because i just can't think exactly what um he's under at the moment because this is the problem everyone has art names and then they have their real names and when you're in the scene <laughs> it gets yeah. really confusing but um, there is, there's actually quite a few that I would say that are from here. There's also um, a guy that does a very similar sort of work, obviously different style um, here in Belfast, which is visual waste. And I'm always seeing his work coming up all the time. Um, yeah. And it, I, I think as you see the work come up, it's just constantly getting better and better. Yeah. I mean, can you recognize artists without seeing, knowing who it's by? Do you recognize their style and yeah definitely like when you see especially ones up in up in belfast like when you see something go up um you know exactly who it's by um there is a guy tim mccart um McCartney, he does the um dog mural so every time you see one come up i'm like oh there's another one of Tim's, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can definitely see when it comes up, um, which is nice because that means everyone has their particular style. And we recently had Hit the North here in Belfast and it was so good because obviously this year everyone's been so isolated and it's been really hard to be able to do creative meetups in a way. And we did the um street art festival and everyone was painting on the street and having a great time and you got to see what everyone's latest work was yeah in person instead of on social media yeah is it very competitive i don't think so i i think potentially where i'm from in australia it's a little bit more competitive but i don't think so here i think everyone is really mindful of the amount of work that um they put in and especially this year um i started the creatives market which is basically just a whole lot of creatives that come together and showcase their work and i've created such amazing friends from that and networks and no one has been um no one has been competitive in any way everyone is boosting each other sharing each other's posts um if you get a job that doesn't suit you or you're too busy I have been passing it on to the right person that would be suitable for it so I definitely wouldn't say it's competitive well not from my point of view anyway yeah where would you find that uh, that information about that group 
So it's called The Creatives Market. It's on um, Instagram. Okay. Um, and there is a website as well. And the website basically is like a directory of all um, different creatives in Northern Ireland. So if you're looking for a mural artist, you would just click through to mural artists and it would come up with photos of each artist in particular and then the links directly to their website. So it's just a way of being able to connect um, basically like consumers to creators. Yeah, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. Uh, tell me, uh, the other question then I have is, how did you get, I mean, were you always creative and artistic as a growing up or is it something that developed later on or when did you realize you had a, a flair for it? I was always creative, but I wouldn't say that I thought I could draw or paint, like I definitely didn't. So all throughout school, I did a lot of art based things. Um, in my final few years of high school, I did my apprenticeship in graphic design and okay. I enjoyed it, but I just, I didn't like the fact that it was all digital. Like it just didn't feel like I was actually creating. So I actually worked as a makeup artist from the age of 14, <laughs> believe it or not, until wow. the day I moved over here. So I worked there for um, 12 years right. and um, the last two years of me working there is when I first started doing my own art on the side. So I think doing makeup, um, I know it's in the beauty industry, but the type of makeup I was doing was a lot of special effects stuff as well. So it's creating things. You have to have a steady hand. You have the canvas is the body or the face. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I was definitely creative in that way. And I also worked within that um company as their marketing manager so there was a lot of um cremate, uh, promoting um products and creating marketing campaigns for them um which kind of helped with the um graphic design qualification yeah. that i had yeah so what makes what what are the different skills you need to take things up to the large scale of murals as opposed to traditional is there a different, is it the mindset? Is it technique? Is it steadiness? What is it that uh, you have to bring to be able to create them on that scale? I think technique would be the first thing. Obviously, um, you need to be able to know, like say, for example, with the photo you have up there at the moment, you need to know, all right, well, how am I actually going to paint that? Firstly, that's pebble dash. So you can't use brush. You need to be able to use the tools such as spray paint um, to create that. So finding out exactly um, what techniques you need to use. And luckily in today's world, everything is so accessible online. So you, I didn't go to art school. Everything I've done has been self-taught. Right. Um, you know, YouTube is my best friend yeah. <laughs> when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, I think, secondly, obviously, you need to be creative. So you need to be able to visualise what you want to paint or create and and be creative as well in, in how you can um, put that onto the wall. But I think third would be patient. It's, it's really so yeah. for some people is they can be really creative, they can have the skill, but they just don't have the patience to see it right through because it can be really, really exhausting, like in long days, wow. um, you know, up on a scaffold, but it's essentially working like a, a labourer in a way, wow. um, painting all day, and you need to be patient with it and take your time and when you're happy with it, step away from it as well and say, I've done it. So... Def, if, if the moment you rush it, and even for me, sometimes I feel like I'm rushing something and I have to pull myself up and be like, you know what, if you're not ready for it today, take a break and come back to it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things as well. And obviously, there are days in which you're not feeling the inspiration. Can you, you know, and, and that happens as a writer, I guess, as well. But what happens are those days that you just don't feel the vibe to, to create anything? You know, you have to live, obviously, and yet there are commercial implications. But uh, can you go through, you know, brain drain and, you know, writer's block equivalent? I feel, I feel personally, um, I'll get that creative block in a way of like, I feel over, 
overwhelmed with potentially like for example today I had so many orders to park I had emails coming through I had invoices to do and I had it was just admin and I just didn't have the time to actually spend being creative so it's really really hard to separate especially when you turn a creative job into oh, sorry a creative hobby into a, a job you need to be able to find a balance between having times that you can be creative because otherwise you're trying to do something and be involved in creative but your brain is thinking oh have I emailed that person back have I done this it's very hard to switch into it I personally don't get too much art block I feel mm -hmm. like it's the other way around I get too many ideas and not right. enough time to to do them all and what happens sometimes is that you don't get anything done because you're too busy trying to do too many different um creative ideas and speaking to a lot of my friends they have the same thing so it's just it's very very hard to just focus on one task and finish it <laughs> yeah yeah no i i sometimes suffer from that but uh <laughs> one of the things that um how do you when you get ideas what do you do do you put them down and you know the traditional thought of uh, somebody artistic is that they have a moleskin diary and they and they they scribble down their jottings and their thoughts uh, and put them aside and work on them another time is that what you do i feel like i need a better system right. <laughs> I, will be the first okay. um, I will put notes in my phone i'll put pieces of paper that are floating around the studio and i will have i use my ipad all the time and i have an app on there called notability which is really good because you can actually draw in it as well and write notes and you can add attachments yeah um, that's awful but half the time i forget to go back to them yeah <laughs> so i i'm one of those people i prefer to physically write though so i'm trying to make sure i carry most of the time especially when i was traveling and i had my bag on me all the time i just had a notebook and I just constantly would write ideas in there um, and get it onto paper so it was out of the brain. Yeah, very good. Well, look, there's a, a go through a few of the more pieces here. Now, Bradbury Art, this one here, that's, is that a shop front or? A... It is. So that one is the art supply store in um, the city centre of Belfast. So, I know. Yeah, yeah. Beside yeah. the comic, beside the comic store. Um. Potentially, I'm not very good with navigating my way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I've... um, it's right in the heart of. It's near um, kind of behind Next in Marks and Spencers. And okay, that. it's a different place then. Yeah, yeah. different place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but the palette that you have here, it's very much your palette. I mean, you do have a color range that you kind of are known for. I mean, and those colors are, are they're vibrant and they're pastel at the same time. I was lucky with this one because I actually just drew that for no reason. Um, I, th I think I just drew it to post on Instagram. I'm not too sure. I can't remember, but it was. It had no purpose. No one had actually purchased it, right. and I posted it. And Bradbury Art was contacting me to say that they wanted their shutter done, and I thought, oh, this would be perfect. So it yeah. was a lucky thing where a design sort of fit the canvas perfectly. Yeah. Um, and it allowed me to have full creative freedom over it. Yeah, brilliant. Let's go through a few of them. So this is you working on, oh, I mean, are there logistics around having the area closed off and all, things like that? Um, in public, I try to just close it off slightly because um, even though it's common sense that I'm painting, for yeah. some reason, some people just, we still manage to walk in or um, sometimes I've had my spray paint stolen as well. Oh. Um, yes. Um, so I, I would tend to sort of mark it off. It's, it's, it's obviously good for safety reasons as well. Yeah. Um, but this was for the Chester up on in North Belfast and right. it was right in the middle of the lockdown, um, the first lockdown. And they wanted something that was really positive and made people sort of think as they were driving down that street because it's actually quite a busy main road. Yeah, it's just off the Antrim Road, isn't it, more or less? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 Very good. I, I noticed you're listening to music there. Is that 
I am. So, well, I'm, I probably actually would have been listening to a podcast. I tend to listen to podcasts more. Um, really? They can range from true crime to comedy to business stuff. I just, I listen to so many odd things. Even um, there's one stuff you should know and you'll just find out. I'll find the, the weirdest information about yeah. something and that's what I'm doing while I'm painting. Wow, that's so sad. I, I really would have thought it would have been music or something, but yeah. So uh, this seems to be a continuation of the previous ones. Uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed, do you you have the, you sign everything, do you, Danny? I do. I just try to sign everything, especially that is um, going to be on the street because it, this is very highly photographed and it's really nice to be able to see um who photographs it because they quite often will tag me in it as well so yeah. it's it's nice to be able to sign them all off yeah so just in case anybody missed it you, you're on instagram as uh, at danny simpson art and your website is danny simpson art.com isn't it that's right yeah so here we've been here been here okay I, your your finest piece of work danny <laughs> <laughs> no so look uh, i now i have to say when I approached you about this, I didn't know how it would transfer to, to the smaller size. And also, I wasn't aware that you did illustrations. But illustrations is, is something you're doing quite a lot of. And we'll talk about some of the other work you've done on illustrations in a while. But, I mean, I came to you uh, with a pretty vague uh, brief. I mean, I kind of knew your style, but uh, and it was basically trying to encompass uh, Ireland. What was your, your thought process behind this and um how did you end up with the design so initially what um i did was write down all of the different elements that i wanted to include in it so obviously we were trying to tell the story of irish whiskey so i wanted to have different irish landmarks and then different things that um related to the whiskey so whether that be like the pot or the barley or whatnot um I wanted to include all of that. So then the next step was trying to, if you remember correctly, was trying to find the right shape for it to be in. So yeah. um, we, we initially went for a bottle. <laughs> we did, and it and it looked great, but it just didn't fit the the shape of the magazine. So it was about playing around with that and getting um, it to the right level. Um, and then lastly was the colours, so just making sure that the colours fit in with um, the style of the magazine and also to the artwork. Yeah. And it, it became the illustration that you see on the front cover now. Yeah. Let, let's see now. You have it there because you're the first one to have actually the magazine. Can physically. I hold it up? <laughs> Please do, yeah. yeah. You're the first one to actually hold it because ours arrived down here tomorrow and they'll be going to for postage, but uh, you know, I'm I'm just I can't express how how over the moon I am with it. I, I, I said it, it's been a, a huge change in, in direction, and it's probably not something we do all the time. But as a one-off, I think it's a, it's an amazing you know piece. And and what I like actually is that uh, you know it shows the kind of togetherness of whiskey as well, and incorporating the whole Ireland principle behind whiskey as well. Along with the cultural yeah. elements, which I love. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't even mention that. There was a, quite a lot of cultural elements that are included in there. So the fiddle and the harp and that. Yeah. I, I wish you could all see it up close. Um, oh, we can do it closer. Hold on. We can do that. <laughs> can do it that. is really lovely. And the finish on it being matte, it looks really, really, really good. Let, there you go. That's bigger now. You can oh, see it. Hello. <laughs> now, so, I did notice you have your signature somewhere in there. It's not easy to find, but it's where is it on is, the right hand side. It's in the clutter ring. Yeah. yeah. I really like that. You know, if you're not look and of course, what's not I don't know if you have you done magazine covers before? Or no, I actually don't think I've done a magazine cover. Like I've done lots of different illustrations, but I don't think I've actually ended up doing in, yeah. an illustration for one um, yeah. on the cover of it anyway. So, uh, like, my style of art, everyone knows me for trying to sneak little things in there or, or not even so much sneak but have things that 
um, it's not, you don't see it straight away. You no, that's what I loved picture. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I didn't notice the signature for about four or five times when I saw it, the digital version. And, <laughs> and, and then, I, but I mean, there are different elements in there that, so look, I, I want to thank you for that. I'm really delighted with it. I, I, and we've got more comments about the, the cover than we've had on a, any other issue. And of course, I should say we don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, but it, 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 well, we, we, like think, <laughs> we do like to think it's, it stands out a little bit. But you do other, um, you do other smaller illustrations. So you do illustrations, as I said, and you do. Um, there's Woody Kane, who is actually a, a thespian and an actor in a in a form, an amateur th actor. He's saying he looks at the process from concept through to cover. It's very Thank good. You. Uh, but you do other things. So you do you do uh, pictures for you know for posters, cards. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what it is you do on, on the smaller illustrative side? So I do a lot of um, illustrations for my website, which would be um, travel related. You can actually kind of. Oh, Sorry, this is mirrored. <laughs> you can yeah. see one behind me here at the yeah. top of it. Let's have a closer look at that one. So that's I'll have uh, look at this. So yeah. it's an island map. Oh, I can't get it. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's got all different elements. It looks backwards there because of the screen, but it has all different elements hidden in it. Um, there's another one I have down there, but it's it's basically just telling the story. There's so many tiny little things that you wouldn't even know that are in there. So at the bottom, there's a, a guy just kissing the Blarney Stone, but it's actually right. Conor McGregor, and you wouldn't realise unless you had a look at all the tattoos that are on his body. Right. So tiny little things, and tongue-in-cheek, um, like the Australian one that I did, there's a lot of, um, like, we a saying we say all the time is, yeah, nah, nah, yeah which yeah. makes no sense to anyone else but me and Australians, and that's hidden in there as well. Yeah. So that led me to doing um, a calendar, which I recently finished, and the yeah. calendar basically, like, takes you right around the world in 12 months. So I set out a massive task. Um, sometimes I wish I don't do this to myself, but it was to incorporate a landmark or like a cultural item from every single country and territory in the world and split that into 12 different months so there's 12 different regions and basically have you one there to show us do you know i don't because i'm at home and and it's all in my studio actually yeah. um I'm, I'm so sorry it's it is on my on my social media but um you can color in the calendar for each month and it's perforated so you can take that off and frame it um so you're essentially getting 12 artworks in a calendar that you can color in it's just a, such a multi-functional <laughs> thing that i created yeah. um and then also i did a northern ireland coloring in book which has got a lot of different sayings from here don't ask me to say any of them because it doesn't sound right in my accent um yeah but you can color them in it's an adult coloring in book and there's landmarks as well so i tend to do a lot of a lot of things like that um which i enjoy doing especially places like we recently went to italy and i could see all of italy come back and then create something from from that yeah let me and, just try and share so that's your hi, calendar that's it there thank you yeah. um and you'll see as you flick through it takes you through each single one and it, I honestly, again, couldn't tell you how long that took me, but it was well over 200 hours of drawing. Wow. Wow. Um, so the calendar is available at the moment, but I will be also releasing a the prints of them all. And I have an incredible print that actually incorporates every single one in a oh. large format, but that will be coming out next Sunday. All right, okay. Well, that's one to, to be looking at. <laughs> I mean, the level of detail you know in these is mind-blowing no i know <laughs> yeah it's that's... very detailed and it's the it's not even so much the drawing it's also the research of going through and making no. sure yeah. i can capture each place and do them justice and 
it was it was quite difficult in some areas, uh, especially say like the um, Caribbean and the Pacific Islands because they are they're all beach yeah. destinations, and I can't draw a beach for every single one. So I wanted to do them justice in that way as well. So hopefully I have. Um, yeah. There's a cheekiness to your work, if you don't mind me saying so, in a nice way. Is. Yeah, which, which is nice. I mean, uh, it, it's nice to see the little peculiarities, and even the, the, the faces of some of the things that you have there. You know, they have a cheeky grin or something like that as well. So <laughs> obviously, yeah, a good sense of humor as well. Then, I, th I, I think when I first came over here, um, my first job I got was with Willie Jack at the Heart Bar. And if anyone knows Willie Jack, you know that he has quite um, a sense of humor. And he was just firing these ideas at me. And, um, like, for example, he wanted a, he wanted a mural to make people realize that that was the fire exit and he goes i just want people to know that they need to you know get the f out and yeah. um so i said well why don't we just paint that so we did like the fire exit man you know the green running man but every single brick just says get and then it says the right. you imagine what it says but you don't see that until you actually look close because the color is only two shades different in the green. So it's oh, not okay. actually until you look up close that you go, hold on a minute, there's, there's some, something about this mural. So yeah. I, I do like doing little cheeky things like that. I mean, you've done a lot of work in the cathedral. Or, no, is it the cathedral quarter? I suppose it is, that kind of yeah. area. You know? Yes. Yeah. So, and of course, you know, Willie Jack has been amazing in terms of not only promoting Irish, but I think the arts and as well. So, I mean, he would have been one of the, main patrons of you I suppose initially when you came over yeah he definitely he definitely was like he gave me I would say the opportunity to to do what I do now I, I don't know if I would be in the position that I am now if I didn't have the opportunities that he gave me um I was literally someone over here just visiting her granny for two weeks walked into the bar and and he gave me an opportunity um so it's definitely helped me become who I am. Yeah. Um, but also the fact that he was so open to ideas and just he loved something funny, something that was a little bit um, risky in that way. Yeah. And yeah. it allowed me to explore my creativity a lot more. Yeah. Um, I haven't done anything recently for him. Obviously it's all closed in that area, but um he definitely helps the arts and the city as well. Like the whole area of, of Cathedral Quarter yeah. is, he's just created something that Belfast is known for. Yeah. Um, and is the thing is, I mean, he's such a modest man as well. That's the thing. Like, oh, yes. you know, it's, it's fantastic. Tell me, do you drink whiskey? Well, <laughs> I'm learning to. Oh. Um, my partner does he okay. loves it so it doesn't stay in the house long enough for me to um acquire too much of a taste but i have recently um grown fond of it in in certain ways if you know what i mean it's one of those ones that you have to acquire to i don't think we drink it enough in australia so it's only become new since i've been moving uh, since i've moved over here yeah. And do you see Belfast now as your full-time home or are you going to get the travel bug again and venture oh, away? I, the travel bug never left me. I'm still itching. In fact, last night I booked a trip somewhere for like oh, really? next year. I just I can't help myself. Um, uh, it's weird. It's such a weird thing. I, I don't think anyone can really understand it unless you have lived abroad before. Yeah. It definitely feels as though I have two homes and for me, they're completely polar opposites. So um, when I go to Australia, I do miss so much of here. Um, obviously, um, I have my partner here and I have my um, business home. Mm -hmm. I have a puppy. So it, it is a home in that sense as well. But all my family and friends are in Australia. So for me, I would love to just be able to live the dream of, of going back and forth when the borders reopen again whenever that may be <laughs> I mean, you were talking about some of the commissions that you've, you've done a lot of them have been abroad 
uh, and you have some exciting ones coming up. I know you're going to be announcing those tomorrow. Unless yeah. you want to talk about them today, which I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, everybody will find out off your off your website and off your Instagram what you're up to. Um, one thing that we had talked about actually, um, we said we'd like to get two uh, two calendars off you. So, would you be so kind as to pick two questions that you were asked that you liked, and we'll send them each a a, a calendar. Uh, and uh, we'll hope, well, hopefully, they'll get them before the new year. Um, <laughs> but if you can pick out two questions there that you liked, and also we'll arrange if you can sign uh, a few copies of the magazines, and we'll we'll get those to people as well. It'd be nice. Of course. Now this is a very tricky thing to do. I feel. Now you've lost me. Little... Oh. You've I lost feel... my image, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. just looking through here. Um, I think so too. I think we should definitely go through, um, go with Louise Vance when she asked about the mood and the atmosphere of the city. Okay. Um, and I know that it wasn't necessarily a question, but Woody Kane definitely was involved in, in this a lot. So I'd love to send um, a calendar out to Woody as well. Well, brilliant. Look, uh, that's, that's fantastic. I know Woody well, and I know Louise as well. So they're both very deserving and they're big patrons of the arts as well and but big fans of the arts. So Everyone deserves one. <laughs> if only I had enough, I appreciate all the questions. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, if anybody's interested in your work and uh, want to find out more, that your website is a great place to go. When are your last shipping for Christmas and uh, calendars and other bits? So um, everywhere apart from the UK, I've kind of, I can still send it, but I can't guarantee it will be there before Christmas. But the UK is the 18th of um of December, sorry, I forgot what month we were in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, that that's the Royal Mail um, uh, guidelines, so it'd be around the eighteenth of December, I think. Um, with um, down south, I think you can get close to that date, but I've just had to say it cut off because there's so many different regions. So yeah. I'm still yeah. posting. I'll still post as it comes out. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I've i seen how much posting you've had to. I know what's involved in, <laughs> in enveloping and labelling and stamping. And I, I, But you have the addition of putting in, like, tissue covers and protection for the pictures. And Yeah, the, uh, everything like, everything has to be seller sleeved And then I like to make sure it looks nice when you open it. And I write a little handmade letter. And perhaps I make too much work for myself. But I, I think it's nice when people have gone out of their way to purchase something from a local artist that they get to see that as well. Yeah. And the, the thing is, you are printing those yourself and they are uh, archival quality prints. They're not difficult yeah. prints that you can just go and... So somebody's getting something very... Um, well, two people are getting something very special and there's something mm -hmm. so nice about getting something tactile like that. So thank you oh, very wow. much. And uh, look, I'm, I'm going to ask you actually... You said your partner is an artist as well. How does that, uh, in terms of, um, I'm not, I'm not being cheeky now, but uh, in terms of getting <laughs> getting inspiration, I mean, do you ever come across the same thing and just view it so completely differently, or, or do you both realize that's something that uh, has creative appeal? Yeah, we would be very similar in the way of, of things that we like, but. I, there would be differences as well. Um, we obviously like a lot of the modern art. I can I can safely say that we've been to in our travels quite a few um, typical art galleries and walked yeah. away being like, don't know if we fully appreciated that as much as we should. Yeah. Um, but we we tend to have quite different styles, so yeah. we do work together. Um, together, like say, if I'll get a mural, like I've got one coming up, um, and. Um, he'll work with me in 
in um, not so much designing it but painting it and it would be the same vice versa so yeah. yeah well that must be that must be something really nice as well to be able to share that kind of understanding of art as well and appreciation and being definitely. able to help each other out so well yeah. definitely when we went to um we went to newcastle there uh what, about a month ago and we painted in charlotte crosby's house and yeah. we both went together and it was nice to be able to have that trip you know with someone um and paint together yeah, so, yeah yeah what are the plans then for the future oh i've got too many ideas um hopefully <laughs> i would love to do a little bit more um abroad like i'd love to visit new places and be inspired because i find as soon as i travel somewhere i just get all these ideas of things that i want to do but in the not so distant future, I have quite a few commissions that I'm working on at the moment. I have one for a local um, uh, bar area that's yeah. with a, um, a company, like a, a drinks company. And yeah. then also there is a few um, exclusive drops that I have of artwork prints with collaboration of different creatives as well. Yeah. Uh, Sarah there from uh, McConnell's Whiskey asking, do you listen to music? I think uh, we touched on that you, you listen to podcasts. So hopefully you listen to this one afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, look, um, I just want to thank you very, very much. It, it's, you know, it's inspiring to listen to somebody so creative. And I can see you're just bursting with ideas, you know. And uh, <laughs> Personally, I couldn't. I couldn't have been happier with what we ended up with ourselves. But such a big fan of what you've done, and I can't believe you actually agreed to do it. But it was a real. <laughs> it was a real but uh, delighted, and just want to thank you very much, and wish you every success going forward. And we'll be keeping an eye on you, and hopefully, we'll do something again going forward. Oh, thank you so much. It's so nice to finally see it in yeah. person. I'm um, dying to see before, you. before all of you. <laughs> look, look, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank uh, you. I've frozen again because my I have one of these loose USB cables. Uh, yeah. So right. look, any everybody, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. If anybody wants to find out more about Danny's work or uh, if they want to support small business and support the arts which have gone through difficult times, uh, please visit our website. And if you want an exclusive cover of her artwork on the magazine, visit our website and take a copy of the magazine. That's a limited edition as well. But uh, mm -hmm. everybody have a great evening. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoy the, the different show and you enjoy the different cover. And again, Danny, thank you so much. So very You're much welcome. appreciated. Take care. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye. 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 Stay safe. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was something slightly different. Uh, it's it's nice to try something a, a little bit different now and again and uh, kind of try and help promote the artists uh, that are making some great headroads at difficult times. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Next week, our guest is William Lavelle of the Irish Whiskey Association. So if you have any tough questions you want to ask them, uh, Get them ready, and we'll be uh, talking to them next week. So stay safe, stay well, and speak to you soon. Thank you.